Sultan Gozo, and welcome to another edition of Love and Daily. I'm your host, Jonathan Chilia, joined by my co-host, Tim Diakono, and here are your headlines for today. Hundreds call for justice in Valletta protest amid fresh scandals. Keech Gembry te- testifies about 17 Black in Daphne Caruana Galizia case. PN's former head of media categorically denies meeting Jorgen Fenech for payments. Dedicated hate speech unit proposed by police commissioner nominee. Malti's man kicks off incredible anti-plastic swim from Sicily to Malta on Thursday. Today's show is brought to you by the Six Pack Revolution. We've got an incredible competition going on right now, guys. You can win over 300 euros worth of goodies, including the free entry to the July wave of the Six Pack Revolution. If you want to get into shape, in time for summer, get a good bod, get a six pack going. They've got a great fitness plan, they've got a great nutrition plan, they've got some other great goodies including recipe books, t-shirts, bottles, as well as the actual regime and plan itself to get you in shape. All you need to do is get into the comment section below, tag one person, we've got some more details in the caption, so get tagging, you don't want to miss this, this is a great way to get in shape for summer. But let's head to the stories today. It's quite a bunch of headlines today, Tim, right? Quite, quite a couple, if you say so. Um, yesterday, we had an incredible um, story, and I think we'll move right to the first story. So yesterday, if you were in Valletta or if you were watching the live stream on Love and Malta or, or on other media, hundreds of people took to Valletta to protest a new slew of scandals hitting Malta. So obviously, in the last few weeks, we had the wind farm scandal in Montenegro, lots of allegations there. There have been new facts coming out in relation to 17 Black, and it seems like every few months, Electrogas pops its head up again. People took to the streets of Valletta yesterday to demand for justice and for truth in the regards of these scandals. And people had things to say. Um, people were chanting things such as, Min Castilla al Cordin. Other people were chanting things like, Abela Popatsta Moscat. So clearly you can feel the anger in the um, air. You were on the scene, right? Yes, I was. And um, obviously, this was the first major protest in connection with these scandals and in connection with Daphne Kualakalitia since Joseph Muscat's resignation as Prime Minister. Now, these protests have continued despite him having resigned. And I think what that shows is that this was never just about politics. This was never just about getting Joseph Muscat to resign um, as Prime Minister and getting you know, other people who they prefer into power, but it's also about justice and that also means criminal justice and that means that people you know who were involved in a murder who were involved in large-scale corruption should answer for their crimes and should answer for them in court because they are crimes that's exactly it i mean obviously this is the first protest of this type we've that we've seen in months obviously we've had the COVID pandemic i know there were some smaller protests in recent weeks um, yes um there were a couple of just a couple of people protesting outside the ministers um you know ministry but this was the first, I mean, it, it, to be fair, it wasn't as large as the November ones where there was widespread public anger. Mm. But then again, one could also argue that, that people only given 24 hours notice before this one. So um, it is definitely a sign to the government that, you know, people are not, um, you know, not, are not ready to just forget about everything that's happened in the past. That's exactly it, and I think actually um, this leads on to the second story, especially what we were hearing in court yesterday. It might lead yes. to some more protests in the coming weeks. <laughs> yes, so uh, obviously um, if you were following um, the news at all yesterday, you know that Keech can be testified in, in court in the police's case against Jorgen Fennec. And a couple of points did come out. I mean, a lot did. I'm going to just like, summarize them you know, um, to be brief. So first of all, he said that um, it was actually... Joseph Muscat, the then Prime Minister, who had instructed him to call Jorgen Fennec to, uh, on the night before he tried to leave Malta to tell him not to leave. This is the first time he said this. In fact, before he had actually said that Jorgen Fennec had called him, had messaged him and, you know, to tell him that he's leaving. Now, apparently, the Prime Minister is involved as well, or the then Prime Minister. Um, oh. Secondly, he had, um, you know, for the first time, um, you know, ever, Keech Kembri confirmed that, there were, that he did have very um, detailed business plans with 17 Black, which is of course Jorgen Fennec's company. So after spending, you know, a long time, years, dodging questions, evading, 
um, questions about this topic. He finally confirmed that he, he did indeed um, plan to do business with 17 Black. The reason being that, you know, Jorgen Fennec was a respected businessman and he wanted a post-political business career with him in, in food and gaming. Well. Make of that as you may. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he also... You also spoke a lot about this famous ranch, right, of, of your ranch, Fennec. The famous ranch. Yes, and that's basically where he used to wine and dine, um, you know, people in positions of power, people in positions, in positions of um, influence. And one, and one of them was himself, right? There in fact, they, they, they had a very close um, friendship. They had, had great, chem well, great chemistry together. That's exactly what they said. In fact, um, obviously, Kitsch Gembry, the former chief of staff for the OPM in the previous administration under Joseph Muscat, Clearly, he came to name names yesterday. Um, he named, as you said, uh, Joseph Muscat, opposition leader Adrian Delia. He named Malta Today editor Saber Balzan. Um, he was naming people who came to the ranch of Jorgen Fennec. Um, it, it seems like he really did want to give some information. And he even gave information about his personal friendship with Jorgen Fennec. He said that they've known each other since they were young, that they've had chemistry. Um, but in light of recent events, he said that he was not friends with him anymore. So, <laughs> no. no, I mean, right. big surprise. <laughs> Kitsch Cambry and Jorgen Fennig might not be friends over the recent months. Mm. Um, so, very, very interesting. Obviously, it was a big day because Kitsch Cambry's testimony is not something you hear often. Um, previously, he had always found, he, he had ha always had an excuse or he even dropped some libel cases in previous times, so it was really good to see him take the stand yesterday and finally get some information out, which actually leads us to the next story, another bombshell allegation. Um, during testimony, it was alleged that the former head of media for the PN, uh, Pierre Portelli, would meet Jorgen Fennec once a month for 20,000 um, euros in cash. Um, these were payments done from Jorgen Fennec to the PN monthly, Obviously, Portelli has categorically denied this. Um, he did a status yesterday denying it. Um, he actually even went to the police and signed an affidavit. Yeah, he signed an affidavit in court. Um, this is the first time that Pierre Portelli's name was, was brought up in these allegations. However, this is the fourth time that this allegation has been made. The first time was last year by David Take, where he said that um, he heard that Jorgen Fennec offered the PN 50,000 euro to prevent David Kaza's re-election. The second time was Melvin Thomas saying in court, the, the middleman in the murder, um, saying basically the same thing. Um, thirdly, it was called Sanya Navarra, the Labour TV presenter, who for the first time mentioned that it was offered and accepted, it's a big difference, to Adrian Delia personally. And now we have Keith Cambry saying, He's 100% sure that he's telling the truth. Um, now, do you believe Keith Cambry? Um, I, I mean, like, that's neither here nor there at this stage, but it's four people now, um, four very different types of people um, alleging the same thing. What we do know as well is that David Kaza's people, his campaign team, definitely did feel that the party was working against him during the election campaign. Oh, wow. Definitely, like it was, it was, it was, they were constantly complaining about it. It was quite clear that Adrian Delia wanted Frank Psyla to be elected instead of him. Um, and he was angry, David Kaza. Um, whether this means that um, the party was actually bribed by a murderer, um, Daph by Daphne's murderer, I don't know. But it's, I don't think, I think the PN needs to explain this a little bit more than just saying I deny it. I'm, I'm sure there, needs, there needs to be yeah. a proper explanation of Adrian Delia's relationship with Jorgen Fennec and what, what he did and didn't say, because it's becoming a bit ridiculous now. Yeah, I think the allegations that a businessman could have approached a Maltese political party and offered payment to damage the campaign to re-elect a politician, in this case David Kaza, is outstanding. It's really remarkable and insane. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think... I had never heard of anything like this in Malta before. I'm not saying it never happened before, I just never heard of it. So we'll definitely need some clarification on this story. And maybe we'll get it with our new Maltese police commissioner. Yes, that's right. So Angelo Gaffar has officially been appointed um, Malta's next police commissioner. He was, there was a, a parliamentary grilling yesterday. Um, only Labour MPs attended it because mm. the opposition decided to boycott. Um, and this morning he has, Gaffar has officially been named as 
police commissioner. And there was the grilling, right, John? How, how did it go? So yesterday, as you said yourself, there was the grilling. Um, unfortunately, it was only Labour members in the grilling um, after the PN decided to boycott it, which in my personal opinion is a missed opportunity. Absolutely. I mean, they had a chance to ask some harsh questions to the next leader of the police force. Obviously, this is coming after Lawrence Kotayar, um, uh, the famous Fenkata uh, police commissioner, so we can officially retire the rabbit jokes. Um, but I really do feel it was a missed opportunity. Um, they grilled him. He had to answer some relatively easy questions. He had a couple of questions um, that were a bit tougher from Glenn Bedingfield, for example. But during the grilling, he said some interesting things about how he would be approaching his role as police commissioner. Um, one of the most important things he said was that he would be treating hate crime as he treats domestic violence, as the police currently treat domestic violence, um, as it is hate crime does not have a unit within the police force, domestic violence does, so it seems like he would like to open a hate crime unit within the police force, which is brilliant, especially considering over the last few months we've had a rise in hate crime and hate speech in Malta. Um, not only that, he actually talked about the recent um, traffic core abuses, um, money laundering and overtime excess claims and abuses, something we've covered extensively on loveamalta.com. He said that he had actually identified the potential for these abuses a while back and even filed a report flagging them, a okay. report that wasn't um, picked up. He even said he even put some recommendations in place or he proposed some recommendations they were not put in place. Um, he's said that he finds that there is a lack of leadership skills within the police force himself. As the chief, I guess he'll be in a position <laughs> to really make amends and change this, put a system in place to you know, really stop inhibiting leadership and encouraging it, actually. Yep. And one of the most important things I thought he said was that he intends to have more press briefings, yes. especially on scenes of the crime, you know. Yes. I mean, if you look abroad, especially if you look at American TV or, or, or British TV, when there's a major crime, generally a high-ranking police officer or the police chief himself will be on the scene, whether it's 4 p.m., 4 a.m., and give a breakdown of the latest information to the public and to the media. It, it's, yeah. it's a healthy discussion, it's a healthy two-way debate, yeah. and this way you keep people informed and you keep a healthy trust in the media. Unfortunately, under the previous police commission, we had one, one press briefing. And it was a disaster. It was an absolute disaster. Yes. Were, were, were you yes, there? I was there, yes. You were there, right? Yes, it was a, a week after Daphne Kwan Galicia's murder, and he said basically nothing, but it was a lot of pressure for him to deliver a press briefing. But yes, hopefully, this is a new chapter and um, the police, you know, it, we are going to be ushering in a new, a new era of transparency in the police force because at the end of the day, um, it's, 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 the, it's their job as well to keep the, the public informed about major crimes and um, they, they, shouldn't, they shouldn't shy away from, from addressing the public. Yeah, talking and about um, not shying away from addressing a proper challenge, <laughs> moving on to the last story. This guy's crazy. So I don't know if you know this guy, Neela Juice, um, Maltese man, Maltese legend, Maltese swimmer. Um, he will be swimming from Sicily to Malta this Thursday. Um, that's over 130 kilometers um, to highlight the problem we have with plastic in our oceans. So this is part of the campaign Way for Change. Um, they're trying to draw and really raise awareness to what we're doing in our oceans. Obviously, we've covered this extensively on Love of Malta, and I'm, I'm sure you're aware, but if you are not, plastic is super damaging to wildlife, especially marine life. I mean, we've all seen videos and pictures of turtles um, choking on pieces of plastic, etc., etc. Nila Juice wants that to change. He's swimming from Sicily to Malta to raise awareness. He's leaving from Pozzallo um, this Thursday, and he should be arriving the next day in Sliema in Malta um, on Friday, so, so wow. 24 hours. 24 hours, a bit less than 24 hours, that's incredible. I mean, I mean, listen, I love swimming, I love to dive, but I don't know if I could swim from Sicily to Malta, no matter what the cause was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, good luck to Neil. Um, obviously, he's done, he's, he's, he's quite experienced in these types of swims. He's swam around Gozo before, um, but this is going to literally be swimming from uh, um, one country for another. Exactly if I'm mistaken, it's going to be the second person in Maltese history to, to, you know, to, to swim from Sicily to Malta. The first is the 1980s. Wow. So we might be seeing a little bit of history made um, this, this, coming, this coming Thursday. So stay tuned to loveandmalta.com and we'll be following, we'll, keeping, we'll be keeping you updated with um, Neil's journey um, 
in, in his naval journey. That's exactly it. Super exciting. Um, I think that brings us to the end of today's episode. Quick reminder, we've got that super competition going on. Six pack revolution. Get in shape this summer. These guys have a great fitness plan, a great nutrition plan. They want to help you get in shape. They've got the plan for you in July. Get into the comment section below, tag one person and you could be in with a chance to win free entry and access to the July wave of the six pack revolution aside from some other great prizes. So get tagging below um, and until tomorrow, have a day full of loving.